You know those aha moments when you read something so cool and you just have to share it with someone? Okay, well, this next book is filled with those. It's called A Feast of Science by Dr. Joe Schwartz, or just Dr. Joe, as he's known to his listeners. He has made a career out of demystifying science for the masses. And Dr. Joe is here to share a few with us now. Good morning. Hi. This book was so interesting to read because if you love information, it's got so many cool tidbits in it. And we are a society that loves to find out more. But social media, while it's great for sharing a lot of information, it can actually create what you call an, uh, an information feast as opposed to, or pardon me, an information famine as opposed to a feast. Absolutely. So why would you say that? Well, we're just inundated with information every day. I mean, thousands of research papers are published and the magazines, newspapers pick up the data and usually misinterpret it. Yep. And uh, our job really in the scientific realm is to make sure that the public gets the right information uh, because there's this such a flood, a tsunami of information. Some of it's sensible, a lot of it nonsense. We try to separate. And this really is why my office at McGill, Office for Science Society, was created, to, to separate sense from nonsense. And that's what I try to do in this book. Well, and help us make sense of something and figure out what's useful and what's not. Because like you said, there's so much out there. Speaking of being inundated, you have answered like 10,000 questions over the course of your career. Uh, but the very first one is so interesting because it wasn't as sciencey as I thought it was going to be. No, that was a fascinating one. First time I was doing radio. And uh, I was, you know, young and thought I was listening very carefully. And there was this curious question. The guy says, uh, is it safe to lick my balls? Kind of, <laughs> you know, that kind of stuns you, right? But uh, he also was nervous. He was speaking very quickly. And he recognized that he had missed a very important word. And that was golf. Golf balls. Ask him about golf balls. Because as I found out, golfers have the tradition, superstitious tradition, of picking up the ball kissing it before putting it back down and whacking it. Not a good idea to fill in with saliva, the dimples. But right. anyway, he was concerned that the pesticides used on the golf course uh, were a problem and that he might be transferring some of these to his lips. So uh, we discussed this. I sang to him the anthem of toxicology, which is that only the dose makes the poison. And I said, you know, there were better things in life to go around kissing than golf balls. I'm not sure he took that advice. <laughs> but it was very interesting because immediately, and this, this was 38 years ago, it, it put me on the path because I realized what people were interested in. They were interested in the risks in their life, which may be sensible or not. And uh, we've been dealing with this ever since, you know, whether it's uh, uh, putting soap under your sheets to cure your restless leg syndrome, which of course doesn't work, or silly homeopathic remedies that are supposed to cure everything, or some legitimate dietary advice. So we, we try to balance it. And, you know, uh, in the book, I, I pick up, I think, a lot of sort of issues that people are concerned with in their daily life, uh, whether they should be taking charcoal supplements or is yogurt, uh, you know, good to eat. And uh, use the facts, hopefully in an entertaining way, to give people a good perspective on science in their everyday life. What is important, what is not, what you should worry about, and what not. And we have to dig beneath uh, just the surface. You really have to dig in because you've got an example, an anecdote about McDonald's coffee and a lawsuit that came about that, but it wasn't just surface level, the, the bigger story. Absolutely, told the bigger absolutely. Whenever you scratch the surface, you find something more complicated. The coffee episode was interesting because everyone heard about it through Seinfeld. There was a Seinfeld episode where Kramer spilled hot coffee on himself and launched a lawsuit and everyone thought how ridiculous. Well, this was based on a real life event where as the media reported, a lady was driving with hot coffee between her legs, spilled it, had a terrible burn, sued, and had a $3 million settlement. And this was presented as a frivolous lawsuit. Turns out this was not the case. She wasn't driving. She was in the, in the passenger seat. The car wasn't even moving. She was trying to take the cap off of the, the coffee and spilled it. Terrible injury. There was not uh, a lawsuit. She just wanted McDonald's to pay for some of her medical expenses. And when they only offered $800, that's when she got upset. And that's when she sued. And the jury actually awarded her $3 million. They eventually settled for about $400,000, something like that. But the reason there was an award is because the company had had about 700 previous cases where they were warned not to serve the coffee too hot. So there was real legitimacy there. And that's why you know, now you have uh, instructions about how not to spill coffee, because yeah. it can be too hot. That's legitimate. 
On the other hand, what is now going on in California with Proposition 65, where they want to warn people that coffee can cause cancer because it contains acrylamide, this is scientific nonsense. Well, Dr. Joe, this is why we need you to, to help us figure out all of the science. So thank you so much for being here Thanks this very morning. much.